Have you ever noticed that most all-in-one liquid coolers have almost exclusively started shipping with just one set of fans? Like, a 240ml cooler comes with just two 120ml fans and only one set of long screws to mount them. Even though there's a perfectly good side to mount another set of fans to. So what gives? I mean, more fans means more better, right? This has to be a, a conspiracy by big fan to make your coolers less effective and force you to buy bigger, more expensive coolers. Or maybe it isn't, and it's actually a calculated decision based on a number of nuanced factors. Factors which I want to explain in this video, so Let's get started. Now, just to set your expectations, this isn't a carefully controlled multi-week test run by someone with, well, long hair and years of experience and knowledge in testing this sort of thing. I'm not Steve. I don't have air conditioning, so I can't actually control the ambient temperature, only measure it, and I purposefully didn't control things like the fan and pump speed so that I could show effectively real-world results. What would happen if you stuck some extra fans on your AIO? I did, however, control the CPU, which is a Ryzen 9 5900X running with Precision Boost Overdrive set to 185 watts PVC, 170 amps EDC, and 125 amps TDC, and as well as logging the temperature, I also compared the power consumption to make sure that that stayed the same across the various runs. As for the cooler, well, that's this beast, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360A RGB. This comes stock with three P12 PWM A RGB fans that are hooked up through the same four pin PWM fan header as the pump and VRM fan. They're rated for 48.8 CFM of airflow and 1.85 millimeters of H2O of static pressure. This is a 38 millimeter thick radiator, which is around 10 millimeters thicker than the standard radiator you'd find on, say, a Corsair H100i, but in theory, it should be more benefited by having more fans. It's also a fairly high fin density, which again should lend itself to more fans being useful. As for the second side of fans, well, those are the exact same P12s to keep things, well, nice and even. So does more fans mean more better? Well, in the Gooseberry render, it really does look like it. I mean, look how much lower the blue push-pull line is than the orange pull, or especially the green push light. Oh, 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 sorry, I I'm being told uh, that this uh, is why I recorded the ambient temperatures uh, for each run, so that I could actually show you an ambient corrected chart. Uh, apologies, let's sh cut to that one now. Ah, that's much better. The green push and orange pull lines both mix nicely together, and while the blue push pull line is lower, it's not by much. In the best case, it's about one degree lower than the other configurations. Uh, oh, in fact, I'm being told that we can even zoom in on this to get an even closer look, so let's do that. Now, it should be pretty obvious uh, to see the difference, or I suppose lack thereof. The green and orange lines do clearly intertwine pretty closely, and while the blue line is also clearly separated and lower, if you look at the axis, you'll see that the blue line has uh, an absolute maximum, about 1.5 degrees of advantage, but especially throughout the earlier portion, well, that's more like 0 0.5 to, to 1 degree Celsius. Now, that gooseberry scene only runs for around 9 minutes on this chip with this overclock. So what about something longer? Like Citibench R23 multi-threaded running on repeat for 30 minutes. That ought to do it. I, I said that ought to do it. There we go, much better. In this test, interestingly, the push and pull lines are reversed, with push running a fraction of a degree cooler on the whole. 
The blue push-pull line is still the, the coolest, but again, if we zoom in, I, I said zoom in. <sighs> you can't find good help these days. Anyway, you'll see that the advantage of having more fans is best case two degrees Celsius. And if I'm being honest, my ambient temperature measurements were all prior to running either test, and I consistently ran the Cinebench test after the blender render. And while I did allow for the cooler to return to normal temperature, the ambient temperature very well could have bumped up by half a degree or so, which may account for some of the variance there. Either way, it's clear that there isn't a substantial benefit, at least in this setup, running a push-pull configuration, as I'd be looking for, well, a clear advantage, something like five degrees Celsius or more consistently cooler, and you don't get that here. Now, I can already hear you rushing to the comments to call me a moron. And well, let's face it, you're gonna do it anyway, and let's be honest, it's probably the right thing to do. Uh, I didn't control for fan speed. And like, OMG, that totes the point. Well, here's the thing. If you watched my review of this cooler, you'll know that it is absolutely silent even with almost 200 watts being pumped through it for over 30 minutes, it's still barely taking over. So adding more fans, well, they will be able to run at a lower RPM thanks to more blades flowing air, so well, actually blowing or sucking air through the fins. The added noise of just having twice as many fans counteracts any benefit to the reduced RPM. The thing is, this behemoth of a cooler is clearly overkill, even for this CPU, and it's not what you are going to be installing in your next gaming PC. Okay, yes, you three people with an insatiable need to have the ultimate, quiet and yet performant PC, you will, but the rest of them won't. For a thinner, say, 240mm radiator, in theory the fans play a bigger part in keeping your parts cool. A big radiator like this has two things going for it, thermal mass and surface area. The larger uh, thermal mass comes from more liquid in the loop to sink the heat away from your CPU, and more mass to soak the heat out of the fluid. And the extra surface area is an entire extra fan's worth of heatsink fins that the heat can dissipate from. This sort of design even with this much heat, doesn't actually need that much air moving all that quickly through it to keep things cool. Compare that to a thinner 240mm AIO, which not only has less fluid, but also has much less surface area for the heat to transfer from water to metal to air, meaning that you need more air moving quicker and more forcefully to have it evacuate that heat effectively. That means that your fans will be working harder and spinning faster to maintain the same cooling power. That's why some 120mm AIOs do still come with two fans in the box. The less surface area you have, the more work the fans have to do to keep the air moving over those fins to dissipate that heat. So is it all some big conspiracy? Are you leaving performance on the table by not using all of the fans you can? Well, no, not really. In the right scenario, you can see some benefit from running a push-pull configuration, but if your CPU isn't pumping out all that much heat, or you have a monster cooler like this one, then it's unlikely to be worth the extra cash you need just to buy the fans. Plus, look how chunky this thing is with fans on both sides. It's practically covering half the motherboard, and even with a thinner rad, it's still pretty massive, so only do that if you want to touch less fan noise, or if you're really pushing the limits of your cooler. It's also worth noting that, practically speaking, 
there really isn't much of a benefit in the push versus pull configurations, at least in terms of temps or noise. So my advice there would be mount whatever is easiest for you to get set up and to maintain. At the front of a case, I would go with a pull configuration since it will be easier to clean the dust off from the front of the radiator instead of having to remove the fans. And actually speaking of removing the fans, installation will be easier since you won't have to fish the long screws through the case, then through the fans, which can move in and of themselves, and then to the radiator, which trust me, the holes won't be aligned and you will end up screwing through at least the fins, if not some of the tubing in the radiator, and that's just a very bad time. Anyway, uh, vice versa, if you're mounting it up at the top, generally speaking, you want a push configuration there because one, it's still going to be easier to install, and two, you get to see the shiny LEDs if that's what you're into, uh, at least more directly, and they can shine light across your case rather than having to look directly up through the bottom of the radiator to maybe get a glimpse of them. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and the, the testing, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Do you run a push-pull configuration or do you not bother and just stick with the, the manufacturer provided just standard push or pull? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more testing on this, maybe with air coolers or just different sizes just to get the, the numbers comparison rather than the more theory that was uh, what I was going for here, then feel free to let me know in the comments as well. If you want to check out the cooler that I've used here or the fans, I'm going to leave links to both of them in the description down below where you can check them out. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to a local Amazon store where you can, well, check out pricing when you watch this and maybe pick one up yourself if you fancy. I'll also leave uh, the review of this cooler on the end cards if you haven't already checked that out when they pop up. If you want to see more videos like this one or more standard reviews, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these, well, arguably silly videos, then feel free to do so by uh, directly with the YouTube join button, or you can do so on Patreon instead if you'd prefer. You can pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one. This is the RTX 2060 I designed in Blender myself, or there's a load of other designs. Uh, there's also affiliate links to places like Overclock GK, if you're buying from there, a load of other stuff like VPN options, Humble One, No Streamlabs, OBS, and a whole lot of other stuff. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll leave you in peace. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.